First, let's go over some basic gross anatomy of the eye. Here's a rough drawing of the eye. Here is the sclera, the cornea, the pupillary aperture, and the iris. This is the vitreous cavity, which we'll be discussing today. We'll mainly be talking about the vitreous jelly. And as you can see here, it's literally jelly. The vitreous is a clear, gel-like substance that occupies the vitreous chamber or the posterior part of the eye. The posterior face is called the posterior hyaloid membrane. Oftentimes, the vitreous becomes detached from the retina, and this is something we call posterior vitreous detachment. On a microscopic level, the vitreous is composed of collagen fibrils linked with hyron molecules. Hyron is hydrophilic, and hyron draws water into the spaces between the collagen fibrils. Basically, as we age, there's a decrease in gel volume and there's an increased liquid volume of the vitreous. This is called vitreous liquefaction. Basically, there's a breakdown of these hyaluron collagen associations. Drawn here are the collagen hyaluron associations. What this is replaced by is an area of liquid and an area where the fibrils aggregate. This leads to floaters. Well, let's just act like in blue here. It's a pocket of liquid. So let's go back to the picture of our eye. We have our cornea, pupil, iris, sclera, our retina is in red, and let's act like the posterior hyaloid membrane here is in black. In posterior vitreous detachment, this posterior membrane actually gets displaced forward. Posterior vitreous detachment is thought to be caused by a liquefaction of the vitreous jelly. There's breakdown of hyaluron collagen associations, which leads to liquefaction and aggregates of collagen. These aggregates of collagen, here these squiggles in black, can actually prevent light from reaching your retina. And green here is your light, and you can see if there's a floater in the way, the light's going to be dispersed, and it's actually not going to reach your retina. So this is why people describe floaters as being kind of black dots or areas where they can't really see. This diagram illustrates different types of posterior vitreous detachments. Here you can see the regular eye with no PVD. You can see that the posterior hyaloid face is adjacent to the retina. Here you can see the posterior hyaloid face is separate from the retina. And really in all these diagrams you can see that it's separate from the retina. If you think one of your patients or you yourself are experiencing posterior vitreous detachment, you might experience floaters, which is what we described before areas where you can't really see due to the collagen aggregation blocking the light hitting your retina. Flashes of light are also described by many patients. Patients describe this as an arc of light in the temporal periphery, or basically on the outer side of either field of vision. There are certain risk factors for PVD. The first one is being a myope. Basically what that means is you have a negative prescription. If you have one less than 6.0 diameters or negative 6.0 diameters, then you're considered at risk for PVD. The higher your degree of myopia, the sooner you will have PVDs. It's also worth noting that previous cataract surgery actually predisposes you to PVD. 
A procedure that increases your risk for PBD is panretinal photocoagulation. This is often done for diabetics. There are several complications that you can have from a PBD. You can have a vitreous hemorrhage, retinal detachment, or retinal break. A vitreous hemorrhage is when blood fills the vitreous cavity. Retinal, retinal detachment is also a complication of PVD. Basically, due to a PVD, the retina can detach from its posterior attachment, the choroid. You want to keep an eye out for this in your patient because in retinal detachment, the patients also experience flashes of light. You can also have a break in your retina as a consequence. All right, that concludes our lecture. I hope this has helped clear up any issues or any questions that you had about PBD.